be glorified in our praise. Hallelujah. We thank you that we're in your hands in this moment. And so we worship you, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord, it is Mother's Day 2021, the day where we pause to give thanks and praise to God Almighty for the mothers that we have been blessed with in our lives. What would we do without the mantle and the ministry of our beloved mothers? The Apostle Paul, when he was writing Timothy, he said, the faith that was, is in you, it was first in your mother and before her, it was in your grandmother, and I'm persuaded that that same faith and grace is in you. And so today, let me pause to give a great heartfelt shout out to the blessed memory of my sainted mother, Elise Elizabeth Crawford Hilliard Chapman, certainly a woman of virtue, a woman of great price. I think it's known over the whole world exactly how I felt about my mother in life and even now how I honor her in death. I am who I am. I am the man that I am because of the parents that I was born to. But I could not be who I am without the commitment, love, care of my beloved mother. So today I honor mother, I honor her life, I honor her legacy, and I pause also to give God praise for every mother. Happy Mother's Day on this Mother's Day 2021. May God bless each of you, is my prayer. Praise the Lord and God bless you, Cathedral International family and friends. Make sure you take a moment to like, tag somebody, and share this virtual worship experience today. And we pray that the Lord will meet us all wherever we are. It is prayer time at Cathedral, and so let us go before the throne of grace in prayer. Gracious and almighty God, we honor you and we magnify you. We lift you up today, acknowledging that you are a great God and beside Beside you there is none other. You have been good to us all of our lives and God for that we are grateful today. Now God we ask that you would meet us everywhere that we are because we know that where your presence is there is the fullness of joy. Where your presence is healing takes place. Where your presence is uh, we can find peace and refuge. Where your presence is the miraculous takes place and so God today whatever it is that your people are in need of I pray that you would 
would meet them where they are and that they would leave this virtual worship experience uh, knowing beyond the shadow of a doubt that there is a God who sits high and looks low, that there is a God who does not just sit high, but a God who will get low and get into the trenches with us and meet us at our need. Uh, Lord, you love us so much, but we thank you that you are a God whose love is unfailing. We thank you, God, that you are a God who looks beyond our faults and meets us at the place of our need. And so, God, we lift up to you today the grieving. We lift up to you those that are dealing with anxiety. We, de we lift up to you the lonely. We lift up to you, God, all who are looking in this direction in hopes to hear something, in hopes of seeing something, in hopes of getting the hope, the faith, and the help that they need. God, will you do it and do it for your namesake? We turn this worship experience over to you and we ask you, Lord God, to do with it what you will. But God, when we finish gathering today, when we finish worshiping today, we believe you that we will be better, that we will be stronger, that we will be wiser, and that while we are in worship, you are perfecting everything that concerns us. And so for that, Lord God, in advance, we celebrate. For that, Lord God, we lift our hands right where we are, and we declare your goodness. We declare hallelujah, and not just hallelujah, but amen, because it is so. Come on, Zion, just declare amen. Get in those comments and say amen if you believe that God hears prayer and God answers prayer and that it is so. Amen. And we thank you for your love, Lord God. We come to magnify you. Lift your voice and give them glory.
soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt together.
magnify your name with your voice and worship unto the Lord. For he is the King of glory, the Lord God strong and mighty. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. That the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord God mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. So that the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord God mighty in battle. He is. Is the king of glory and he is holy. God from God, light from light, true God, from true God, we got him, not me. In humble adoration. In humble adoration. We bow before your throne. We bow before your throne. As we come before your presence. As we come we honor, you alone. we honor you alone. So we lift up our voices so up wherever our you are voices, as trumpets heralding you. As trumpets heralding you. You are the king of glory. You are the king of glory. So this is what we do. So Come on, say that again. In humble adoration. Father, we bow before we your throne as we come before your, your presence. presence. We honor you, Lord. So we lift so up our voices. Trumpets herald us. Father, you are the King you of glory. This is what we do. So this is what we do. We worship you today. 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 and honor the Lord for his word We bow before your throne. 
give a shout out to all our wonderful mothers. Thank you for being who you are. Happy Mother's Day. Faith of our mothers. Faith of our mothers. Live still in cradle song. It's Ray. I just wanted to come on here and wish you a happy and beautiful Mother's Day. You're my favorite person in the world and I wouldn't be where I am without you. I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. I love you so much and I thank you for all that you've done for me and the sacrifices you continue to make for me. Also, happy Mother's Day to my grandmother, Pastor Phyllis, and all the mothers at the church, as well as the mothers who impact my life daily. I love you guys. I would like to wish a happy Mother's Day to my thoughtful, kind, considerate mom, Reverend Dr. Vivian Thomas McLean, my lovely grandmother, Mother Marian Thomas, and the sweetest aunt on the planet, Dr. Sandra Thomas Montfort and Belinda Thomas. I love you all. Happy Mother's Day. Go, Jack. Happy Mother's Day, Granny and Gigi. We love you. We miss you. Bye. Happy, happy Mother's Day. Day. Thanks for being such a caring mom. Thank you for taking care of others and especially for taking care of us. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. My name is Deacon Renee Jenkins. I just want to take a moment to wish my mom, Lenita Boston, as well as my sister, Nicole Jenkins, a very blessed and happy Mother's Day. I'm grateful that right now I'm actually in Florida celebrating Mother's Day with my mom, whom I haven't seen for two years. And so, Mom, I love you. Sis, I love you. Have a wonderful and blessed Mother's Day all. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day, Mary Champagne. As our song goes, forever is a long time, and that's how much I love you, forever. Thank you for being my mom. Hey mom, it's your son. I just wanted to wish you a happy Mother's Day, and uh, many more to come. Thank you for everything you do. Love you. Happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day, Day, mom. Thank, Thank you, you for, for all, all that, that you, you do. do. Love you, love. Thanks for all that you do. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day to my beautiful Queen Gaga and to my beautiful girls who have given me my grandchildren, Samantha, Faith, and Sharonda, and to all the beautiful mothers out there. 
I love you all. You all rock. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to my mom, Mother Marion Thomas. Mommy, thank you for your love, encouragement, wisdom, and support. Happy Mother's Day to another great mom, my sister, Pastor Vivian McLean. I love you both, and may God continue to bless you. Happy Mother's Day, Cathedral family. Wanted to give a great big shout out to my mother, Mary Trawick. And my mother, Dorothy Johnson. We love you so much, and we're so thankful that you continue to be the light of our lives. We thank you for all that you've done and all you continue to do to support us. We honor you on this day, this Mother's Day, but we honor you every day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. day. Mom, I want to thank you for everything you have done for me and the family. We love you so much and appreciate you so much in the house. Thank you for everything you've done. Again, happy Mother's Day. We love you. Deacon George Turk, I'd like to announce an exciting time in our church for May 2021. We're declaring May 2021 First Fruits Month here at Cathedral International. It's going to be an exciting time for you to be able to sow a special seed into the life of our church. In Christianity, the first fruit offering is a requirement by God. This offering is regarded as a down payment guaranteeing God's richest blessings upon our remaining income for the year. In giving it, we give our best and not our leftovers. The first fruit offering should be given willingly and is dedicated to God's because we want to recognize his ownership over all that we possess. It is also a deposit guaranteeing his blessings on the rest of our income for the rest of the year. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. First Truth offerings can be given at different times of the year to sow seeds of blessing and prosperity to thank God. We're declaring May 2021 a First Truth Month here at Cathedral International. We're asking everyone to sow a seed to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit coming into the earth. We're having an outdoor service on Pentecost Sunday, May 23rd, and we're asking you to sow your seed that day. But we encourage you to sow your seed any time during the month of May that the Lord puts it on your heart. The tithe and the first fruit are two separate offerings, so don't forget, we still want to be able to tithe, and this first fruit offering will be above the tithe for the month of May 2021. The first fruit offering may include a first paycheck that you receive for a new job. It could be a percentage of something that you get for selling something that you own, or it may be part of other paychecks throughout the year. We're asking our members to give a first fruit offering equal to one week's pay this year. So I pray that during the month of May, you will pray, let the Holy Spirit speak to you, and whatever he puts in your heart to give will be blessed to the Lord. It will be a special seed, and even if you can't give one week's pay, whatever you give will be a blessing unto this church. So I pray that you're excited about First Fruits Month in May 2021. As Christians, we bring glory to our God and thank him as much as we can. We thank God for all he has done, acknowledge him as the owner of what we possess, and we sow seeds that will grow and blossom into many blessings and prosperity. 
So get excited, church. May 2021 is first fruit season here at Cathedral International. Let the Lord speak to you, sow a special seed, and I believe that seed will bear fruit in your life. God bless. September 16th through the 18th, 2021 is longevity. Longevity 2021, we are moving forward in structure, strategy, into survival as we move our lives, our ministries, our businesses, our churches to the next level through it all. It's been a challenging year, but the grace and the mercy of God has been for us an ever-present help in the time of trouble. I want you to prepare now to register. It's going to be absolutely amazing. You'll see the list of speakers very soon. It's really going to be amazing. Last year was amazing, but this is going to be amazing. And I want you to register. I want you to get the word out. Pastors and Leaders Longevity Gathering 2021. I want to see you there. God bless you. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men gladly pour into your bosom. And that is what the people of God, you, 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 and you, have been doing over the past few years, and particularly this last year, where we have not been able to assemble in this wonderful, capacious cathedral. But nevertheless, God has been good to us. Listen, we don't need you to stop. There needs not not to be an interruption in your giving. Give and it shall be given unto you. And I want to pray now for all of you under the sound of my voice, those of you who are gracious enough to tune into this service, we're going to pray now over the offering. And we're going to pray for those who are bold enough even to give your tithes. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you for keeping this church, this assembly together virtually. We want to thank and praise you, oh God, that we have not missed a beat. We want to thank you, God, that the people of God count it not robbery to give to the ministry here. And we ask God that you would bless all of those who are connected and affiliated with this local assembly. We want to thank you, oh God, that you are are meeting them where they need to be met. We thank you, God, that you're keeping food on their tables and clothes on their backs, oh God, a roof over their heads. We want to thank you, oh God, even in advance for those who are yet waiting for a miracle to knock on their door. We thank you, dear God, for keeping this church solvent in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we ask that you would breathe upon the offerings that are forthcoming. Breathe upon the offerings, oh God, that have been given throughout the week during Bible study and other gatherings. We ask, God, that you would multiply that which we receive in Jesus' name, that your house would always be taken care of. We thank you so very much for so very many, and we bless you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
Praise the Lord, family. It is a privilege to come to you on this, the second Sunday of May 2021. It is Mother's Day. Thank you, Leah Joy, for that amazing selection, Alabaster Box. It is one of the classics, and I appreciate your ministry today so much. I love you. Mwah. She is our firstborn, and I appreciate her ministry today. I pray that you're blessed, and I pray, pray that you are walking in the favor of God, and I pray that you're strengthened by the word of the Lord. I pray also that this message will be a blessing, and I hope that you'll like, click, and share, and encourage others to be a part of this service with us. Eternal God, we thank you, and we give you praise for the blessings of this day. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who suffered, bled, died, was buried, rose on the third day, with all power in his hands and then ascended into heaven where he sits now at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Would you anoint us, Lord, in a special way? There's so much challenge in the land, but we thank you that you remain the light of the world. And we thank you, Lord, that you are, are the bread of life. I pray, God, that you would anoint me in a special way and anoint these lips of clay that they will speak thy truth. And we will give you praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. The scripture comes to us this morning from, well, this morning, this afternoon, or this evening, whenever you're uh, tuned in. It comes to us from 1 Samuel and uh, the first chapter. And I want to begin at the ninth verse. First. Samuel and 2 Samuel are two books that used to be one book. And the focus of 1 Samuel is on uh, primarily on Samuel, uh, who indeed was born uh, and conceived in these first two chapters. And so I always find this particular passage of Scripture particularly uh, interesting. I want to begin with chapter 1. Verse 9, once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made a vow saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son. And then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life 
and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk, and he said to her, How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great grief and great anguish. Eli answered, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. And she said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. And then she went her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning, they arose and worshiped before the Lord and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah lay with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. And she named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. I want to tag this message this morning, motherhood is a gift. Motherhood is a gift. I always appreciate this passage of scripture and oftentimes here in our church when I christen babies, I often refer to this text, how Hannah cried and was in anguish of soul because she was barren. She could not give birth, and she wanted a child. And she cried unto the Lord, and the Lord heard her and gave her a son, and she named him Samuel, which in essence means because I asked of him from the Lord. She wanted to be a mother, and God heard her and granted her request. The Hebrew name Hannah means gracious or graciousness or favor. Hannah was the favorite wife of Elkanah, a Levite who belonged to one of the most honorable priestly tribes. He was of Jacob's family lineage. It was the burning desire of every Hebrew parent to have a son. The story of Samuel introduces him as a child, as a baby, who is an answer to prayer. His mother, Hannah, prayed and cried and remained in the temple. And after she and her husband came together, God honored them and she was with child. And she made a vow to God, which is a vow that we need to make. As long as this child lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. I want to say here and now that we have the authority to mark our children for God. We should be anointing them with oil in the morning and blessing them at night, even in their cribs, laying our hands on their heads and praying for them throughout their lives. As long as they're in our homes, we ought to be praying over our children because prayer will keep them and prayer will bless them and prayer will anoint them. Hannah cried and Hannah prayed and in her affliction, God heard her. Samuel was born, Samuel was brought to the temple he was given to Eli the priest, and Eli in turn turned around and gave him back to the Lord. Very much to the christenings that we see in all of our various churches and temples when we bring our children to the Lord and we dedicate them to God. Today, we honor God for those kinds of mothers who think it not robbery to bring their children back to God. Today is a day where we honor mothers, where we give God thanks and praise for the gift of motherhood, for the dignity of motherhood, for the honor of motherhood. Historically, Mother's Day is one of those 
uh, major, major days. It is not a holy day on the church calendar, but it is a major holiday right up there with the 4th of July and right up there with Memorial Day. And it's a major day. It sells a, a whole lot of cards. All of the restaurants are packed. You can't get a seat in a restaurant uh, because we have made reservations well in advance because everybody, most everybody, wants to honor mothers. And motherhood is a sacred calling, and the gift of motherhood is a great blessing. And Mother's Day can be a day of mixed emotions. There are those who have challenges with their mothers, and then there are those who have never known anyone in life as sweet as their mothers. And so today is a day we honor mothers that are in the land of the living and we honor God for the mothers who have gone on before us and are waiting for us in heaven. Mothers are a gift from God. Mothers are not mothers simply because they give birth to a baby, but a mother is a mother because she nourishes the child, because she cares for the child. And so today we honor not only mothers who are mothers naturally, but we honor the aunties who are mothers. We honor uh, the nannies who are the mothers. We honor grandmothers who became the mothers. We, we honor the sisters who became the mother of that child. We honor those who walk in the office of motherhood. It's not just those who give birth. There are those who have three, four, five, and six children and refuse to take care of any of them. That is not that is, not, that is not the kind of mothering of which we speak. Today, we want to give God thanks for Hannah. We want to give God thanks for her calling. We want to give God thanks for her prayers, thanks for her sacrifice, and we want to give God thanks for the office and the gift and the call of motherhood. Motherhood is a gift. Today, we want to give God thanks for mothers like Deborah in the Judges, who rose up, the scripture says, and I, Deborah, rose like a mother in Israel. We need today all hands on deck in the days in which we live. There are unique challenges in our community that need the role of solid parents, particularly solid mothers. It becoming, is, is becoming increasingly important in the days in which we're living. And so not only mothers, but fathers also. But let me just say here, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, so many of our fathers chose not to be bothered. For whatever reason, so for whatever reason, close to 70% of our homes are parented by single mothers without the assistance and without the help of a father. Now, for whatever reason, I'm not here to dog anyone out, but I want to just lay it out. And, and our mothers deserve a great deal of affirmation. Our mothers deserve care. Our mothers deserve concern. Our mothers deserve uh, adulation. Our mothers deserve affirmation. Our mothers deserve a standing ovation because in so many cases, when father chose not to stay, mother stayed and she raised those children. I'm thinking about so many of the uh, boxers and the ball players after uh, the press conference, after the game or after the match, or uh, how many of them, when the microphone is put before them, how many of them say, I first of all want to thank God and then I want to thank my mother. How many of them with tenderness of heart, sensitivity of spirit make it clear, I want to thank my mother. Today we give God praise for the gift of motherhood. Motherhood is a gift. We give God praise for the sensibility of motherhood. We give the Lord thanks for the stability that mothers bring us for the self-esteem that a good mother can give us and the unconditional love and acceptance of a mother. How many of our mothers have shielded us from hurt, have shielded us from harm, have shielded us from danger? I don't only mean in infancy, but I mean in infancy, being a toddler and a child and an adolescent and a teenager and a young adult. How many of our mothers have covered us in prayer, have loved us. I'm reminded of my own late mother now in heaven. I'm, I'm reminded of how often when I would come by and visit, I would be on the phone 
joking with her and I'd be on my cell phone and I would have been leaving a church meeting and telling her, leaving church and saying, Mother, I'm on my way home down the turnpike and I'd be just talking and, uh, and then I would ring the bell and I'd be right there on the phone and she's like, you always doing something silly and we'd just fall out laughing and then she'd say, you want something to eat? And of course, most of us say yes. And, but my mother never ever made a meal without sitting with me. Even as a grown man, I would just drop by and she would prepare something and put it on the table and then she would sit down with me and engage. But she did that her entire, my entire life. What it did for my esteem and what it will do for any child's esteem to know that you matter enough for me to stop whatever I'm doing and sit down and break bread with you. Oh, the blessedness of motherhood. How we thank and praise God for our mothers. We're living in an hour now where we need desperately all hands on deck. We need all mothers' hands on deck, and we need all fathers' hands on deck. These are challenging, some might even say dark times. These are times where we need our mothers to stand up and be counted. I'm reminded of several years ago, a riot broke out in uh, Baltimore behind another black person being killed and there was a big riot that broke out and uh, this mother just shows up the, the, the news caught her just showing up she just busts into the crowd many of you may remember she just busts in the crowd she heard her son was down there in the brawl and he was just going in he was going in and that one mother that one mother snatched her son up by the neck as only a mother can do I have a witness right here with one hand, she reached down and snatched him by the neck and snatched him by his undershirt and she pulled him out and pulled him to safety and was beating him all the way home. I'm told that young man is doing well in life now. I'm talking about that kind of tough love that only a mother can give. And she said that you're not going to be out here with your pants hanging off your behind raising hell. And she, she, she perhaps even saved his life. She put something in that boy. How many of our mothers have put the fear of God in us? Maybe they didn't have to snatch us by the neck, but maybe it was just that look. Some mothers, all they had to do is give the look. How many mothers have protected us and shielded us and nurtured us? And when life told us we were going to be nothing, our mothers told us we were going to be something. Faith of our mothers living still. Today we find that there are so many that are in a national state of mourning. So many of us are in a state of mourning. L let me be more specific. So many of us, people of color, are in a national state of mourning. This is a very, very strange and violent season that we're living in. 2020 was a challenging year, but 2021 is turning out to be even more challenging than 2020. We heard the Reverend Al Sharpton this week as he was dealing with the eulogy over young 21-year-old Dante Wright who was shot and killed allegedly by mistake because of a air freshener hanging in his car. Then later, as the story went on, we realized that his license had, had expired. And then there was a warrant out for his arrest. And he allegedly was trying to resist arrest and get back in the car. He was shot dead like a dog in the street. They buried him this week. Dr. Al, Pastor Reverend Al Sharpton talked about the stench of racism, said that, that we need in America to be the air fresheners for this nation, for the stench of racism, for the stench of discrimination, and for the stench of the pain, the stench of error, the stench of injustice. We watch that grieving mother over the pulpit, over the casket of her son, saying, this is all wrong. He should be burying me. I should not be burying him. Well, it's not just Dante, right? But, but the list goes on and on and on. And so many of us are very, very tired. I just want today to make sure that I acknowledge the grieving mothers who are grieving the loss of children who were shot 
and killed and beaten by police. And listen, and these are just a few of the cases because not everybody was caught on cell phones. Do you know if that teenage young woman did not have a cell phone, we would not know at all about George Floyd? How many of us have received justice? How many of us have at least received some kind of understanding of what's going on because someone turned on their cell phone? But there are countless thousands across the country who are in their graves or in lakes and in rivers and were hung from trees and there was no cell phone. And so today, today I want to acknowledge grieving mothers. I want to acknowledge George Floyd's late mother. I want to acknowledge Eric Gardner's living mother. And I, I, I had chills, chills went through me as I was watching some of the funeral of this young man. Chills went through me as Al Sharpton was saying, and this one's here, the family of George Floyd is here, and the mother of so-and-so is here, and so-and-so's mother is here. Chills went through me last year as we watched the funeral of George Floyd, and they said, uh, uh, Trayvon Martin's mother is here, and this one's father is here, and this one, oh my God, we want to pause and acknowledge Tamir Rice's mother, Ati Tiana Jefferson's mother, Sandra Bland's mother, Botham Sean's mother, Ahmaud Armory's mother, Brianna Taylor's mother, Trayvon Martin's mother, Dante Wright's mother. These mothers also prayed that God would give them a child, and God gave them a child, and that child's life was shot. That child's life was lost. That child's life was destroyed because of injustice. And you shall reap what you sow, America. And we need to pray that God would hasten these challenging days and bring us some sunshine. The song that comes to my mind is, Encourage my soul and let us journey on. Though the night is dark and I am far from home, thanks be to God, the morning light appears. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Today we remember these mothers. Mourning mothers. Grieving mothers. Mothers who are at the cemetery on Mother's Day. Not only grieving perhaps the loss of their own mothers, but grieving over the graves of children that died far too young. And then we remember Micaiah Bryant. It's a very clouded issue. Some reports show she was holding the knife, ready to hurt someone else. And some say she had already dropped the knife. Another person said that, uh, but, 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 that she had dropped the knife. But, 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 but here's, here's my question. Could not the police have perhaps shot the gun in the air or shot her in the leg or shot her in the behind? Why must they consistently shoot to kill? They shoot to kill far too many of our children and God sees and God grieves and God mourns and God is concerned. And so on this Mother's Day, while I congratulate mothers everywhere, we also mourn with those mothers whose children have died far too young. Today we want to encourage in a special way also single mothers. Single mothers that are trying to keep it all together. Single mothers. So many single mothers that are not only taking care of their children, but taking care of aged parents. We want to remember also single mothers. We want to remember mothers everywhere and remind you, mother, that God hears, that God sees, and that God cares. I want to dedicate this poem to you by Rudyard Kipling, and he says, if I were hanged on the highest hill, mother of mine, O oh, mother of mine, I know whose love would follow me still. Mother of mine, O oh, mother of mine. If I were drowned in the deepest sea, mother of mine, O oh, mother of mine, I know whose tears would come down to me. Mother of mine, O oh, mother of mine. If I were damned of body and soul, I know who pray, I know whose prayers would make me whole. Mother of mine, O oh, mother of mine. We can't tell it all today, but today, yes, thank you, oh mother of mine, mother of mine. Can't tell it all, but thank you, Rosa Parks. 
the mother of the civil rights movement. Thank you. Thank you to our own mothers. Thank you to our big mamas who so often worked cleaning kitchens and bathrooms for other folk and cooking for other folk and only to come home and do the same thing for their own families. I can't tell it all, but we also want to give God thanks for the mothers who sit on the front row in so many of our churches, or at least back in the day when there was a mother's pew, dressed in white, having their pocketbooks full of starlight mints, everything from makeup to band-aids, to mercurochrome, to neosporin, to crackers, to diapers, to handkerchiefs, to napkins. We want to give God thanks and praise for those mothers who were sure that we went forward in school and got the necessary education and skills so that we could have the very best life that we could possibly have. And even now, I want to remind you that your mother's prayers and my mother's prayers still avail much even though they are in heaven. Prayers live forever. I'm reminded of the words of Jesus in his dying agony on the cross, one of the last seven words on the cross, where he looked at his mother in her agony as she watched her only, as she watched her son dying on Calvary's tree. And Jesus said to her, mother, behold thy son, John, and John, behold thy mother. In his dying moments, Jesus was concerned about his mother. And you and I, in our living moments, need to be not only concerned about our own mothers, but concerned about mothers everywhere. Single mothers, teenage mothers, middle-aged mothers, aging mothers, who are concerned and reach out and touch and care and love and concern and prayer. Faith of our mothers living still. In cradle song and bedtime prayer, in nursery lore and fireside love, your presence still pervades the air. Faith of our mother's living faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our mother's loving faith, fount of our childhood's trust and grace, oh may thy consecration prove, source of a finer, nobler race. Faith of, faith of our mother's Loving faith, guiding faith, we will be true to thee till death. Motherhood is a gift, and today every mother, hats off, standing ovation, salute. Amen. Hannah prayed, and the Lord heard her prayer and blessed her, and she conceived a son, and she named him Samuel. I don't know what you're praying for, mother, but on this Mother's Day, I'm praying for you. Maybe you're praying for a wayward child, or maybe you're praying for a child to make it into college, or a child to come home safely from the armed services. Whatever you're praying for, I'm praying with and for you. And Lord, I'm asking you to bless today on Mother's Day every mother. Where would we be without our blessed mothers? We thank you for their contribution. We thank you for their sacrifice and we thank you for their love. I pray God in Jesus name that you would blanket us with your presence and your power and that this Mother's Day would be a day of joy, a day of good, remember, good remembrance and God it would be a day of change in Jesus name. I pray today in Jesus' name, beloved, that if you don't know Christ as your Savior, that you would accept him. Perhaps you're here today and you're saying, I, I need the Lord to change my life. I, I want to be forgiven of my sins. I don't know. You've embarrassed your family. You've embarrassed yourself. You, you, you certainly have not lived the way you were raised. Or maybe that's the problem. You've lived too much of the way you were raised and the way you were raised wasn't right. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but I want you to know that Jesus Christ still forgives sin and Jesus Christ gives you everlasting peace. Pray this prayer with me. Lord God, I come to you in Jesus' name just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me in Jesus' name. I want you also to become a part of this church. I'd love to be your pastor. I know we're in the midst of a pandemic, but I'd love to be your pastor and I pray that you will come on in in Jesus' name, I want you to be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a number right here, and I want you to call that number, and whatever your need is, 
let us know. We're, getting, we're planning on a big baptism, and I'm looking for a major uh, post-pandemic right hand of fellowship soon and very soon. God bless you. Let the church say amen, everybody. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Motherhood is a gift, the gift of motherhood. Hannah prayed and the Lord heard her prayers and God answers prayer. I know, listen, I know we're living in times of great anxiety and, and, and times of great challenge, but God remains our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. God is with us. I pray that you'll be blessed all week long. Remember that we are in our Bible study platforms every Wednesday now, not Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, but Wednesdays in word and worship. Great praise and worship on Wednesday. Great prayer. Great teaching. And I look to see you all. I need to see more of you than I'm seeing on the platform on Wednesday. Please receive the final blessing. May grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied to you, my brothers and sisters. May the Lord keep food on your table, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, and shoes on your feet. May you be strengthened by the power of the living Holy Spirit to face these challenging days and run on and see what the end is going to be. And may Almighty God bless all of us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God and amen. Let the church say amen indeed. Thank you.
we acknowledge you and we bless your name, God. And we bow down in your presence and we came to worship you, God. Hallelujah. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness. 